All right, we are live. Welcome to the Wednesday Lunch and Learn for Music Compound. This is our Tornado Hurricane Virtual Tune-In Special right now. And I'm just double-checking that we're live. Yes. So the way that we've got this set up is literally old school meets new school. We've got a Zoom going. And so my dad, Bob Donovan, is joining us via Zoom. So he's on a laptop at home. I'm at home with a green screen. I've got his audio going through a Bluetooth speaker. And then I'm filming this with another iPad on a tripod. So we're kind of catching some of this digital occurrence in an analog sort of way. So analog and digital coming together, different generations coming together, all in the midst of a tornado, hurricane, and today it's very fitting because we're going to talk about the evolution of music and some of my dad's earliest musical memories and how it relates to what's going on literally 2020 and I was about to say 2021, right around the corner. So we are in an evolution of music going on and it's very fitting because today our sponsor that we are calling into existence here is by Evolved and it is the Keto Cup. This is a brilliant concoction of cacao, coconut oil, it's an energy bomb, it's got 10 grams of healthy fats and so you eat this way better than any energy drink. Aaron, definitely give this a, give this a try. It's available at Whole Foods. They're not cheap. A bag of them is $11, but this thing is worth $2. Try this and tell me it's not worth $2. All right. So be nourished, be well, and we're going to talk about the evolution of music. So, Dad, earlier today, and actually this whole week, we've been prepping for these convos here. And so, would you share with everyone some of your memories? You were telling me about the crystal set, and most of everyone who's listening, they have no idea what a crystal set is. So, please explain that and what how was that your earliest musical memory before i do that man <clears throat> thank you for having me but uh, rock and roll rock and roll part of it came about the phraseology the rocking and rolling of a ship so today it is very very cool that we we're on when the weather reports are saying the weather is rocking and rolling that's right. Uh, That's it. it. Out in Bay. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so my story. Early, uh, uh, early things were with the crystal set. Uh, I did have a radio, but the crystal set, I could get under my uh, covers uh, in bed when I was supposed to be going to sleep. I had a little earphone. And with the uh, wind or whatever was in the right spot, I could pick up, I lived in Massachusetts, and I could pick up the sounds from a Nashville radio station that was uh, really on the cutting edge of rock and roll and rhythm and blues. But how I first learned about that music was uh, with your grandparents. We used to travel a lot in the summertime. My father would take a couple of months off. He had his own business. And we'd travel out west. And we would go down through the southern states or back through the southern states. So the only thing that we could have on the radio at that time was AM radio. And when we got out of New England, all you could get was those 
that kind of hillbilly music. Right. On the AM. That was the bluegrass. On the piercing sounds. And then when we got uh, further south into Texas, we were getting the Texas swing. When we were in Appalachia, naturally it would be bluegrass. Other parts of the country would get rhythm and blues. Wow. So travel has a way of expanding things. Today, I think it's fabulous with the Internet. You can tune into other countries and get what their cultures and what their people are listening to and pick up some riffs from that to make a fusion out of it. Now, the, the right. story about Nashville, Tennessee, and why I got so into that, uh, or before that, was uh, I was listening to Count Basie, uh, Earl Garner, uh, the Dorsey Brothers. And, the, and so, let, so just those three references right there, that's some musical education right there. The Count Basie, so that would have been more swing, orchestra, correct? Right. Okay. Right. Big bands. Big the bands. Big band era. <clears throat> so when I started listening, it was a lot of big band. But when we did the traveling, I found out there was other kinds of music other than just the big band. My roommate and I did see Count Basie later in life when I was in college. It was fantastic. Amazing. Uh, but in traveling with uh, my mom and dad, uh, I was exposed to Hank Williams, Patsy Klein, uh, Bill Monroe, Earl Scruggs, and uh, people can look up Earl Scruggs on YouTube. But he was actually taught how to play the banjo by a fellow by the name of Snuffy Jenkins, who was from Columbia, South Carolina. I believe you might have even met him. Uh, he played on my banjo. Uh, very I cool. I the banjo because I couldn't play like him. Banjo is uh, hard. That's a very hard instrument. I've tried it many times, oh, yeah. and it's, it's Especially hard. Especially the way they did it. So you but heard Robert, Patsy Klein. When you mentioned Patsy yeah. Klein, you probably, or no probably about it, when you heard Crazy for the first time, what did you think when you heard it? I mean, because that's a memorable song and a memorable voice. I didn't know it was written by... Willie Nelson. Nelson. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that, was, that was a huge hit. It was a crossover. A lot of the kids didn't listen to that. Uh, now, getting back to Nashville, what was happening there was uh, blues, ragtime, jazz, gospel singing, all, all was coming together. And a fellow by the name of John R. Richwood from Manning, South Carolina, who later ended up on uh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, he moved to Nashville, and he started this late night show and he put that kind of music on it and he had uh, Howling uh, uh, what was his name uh, Muddy Waters, Howling Wolves uh, Otis Rush all those guys on and he talked like he was an urban um, black the guy was white but he, he had the way his pronunciation and, and exactly. character on being a so DJ. As a result, uh, teenagers that were a little rebellious, they would tune in. Uh, back in that particular period of time, uh, in the 50s and 60s, uh, white parents got upset with the music being on like that. But totally different times. Yes. Pardon me? Totally different times, and you've seen how music has brought that bridging that gap and was instrumental in actually bringing about change in a positive it always way. Is. Musicians are on the cutting edge because you communicate from an emotional level and the, the rhythms and things of that nature. In fact, the number of disc jockeys uh, started to emulate. John R. And uh, Alan Freed was one of them. And he's the fellow that uh, coined the phrase rock and roll. He was in Cleveland. And that's why you have the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. That's why it's and, there. Uh, yeah, when it, he was there. It, it, and it goes back to, because I always had wondered that. Of all places, why is it not New York City? Why is it, you know, uh, 
anywhere in the globe, uh, you know, but it's Cleveland. Because Cleveland rocks, and the reason why Cleveland rocks is because of this DJ. And what was his name right. again, that DJ? Alan Free. Alan Free. Alan Free. So he coined rock and, and roll. And, uh, it wasn't an immediate switch. There was a, something that bridged it, and it was called rockabilly. Rock came from rock and roll. Billy came from hillbilly. Yes. So it was a fusion of rock, bluegrass, um, and and some other genres. So getting so, it like uh, this, that kind of riff. That were, uh, Gene Vincent, uh, Elvis, they started the crossover. Buddy Holly. So they all started with the rockabilly, and then finally it started to get really into rock and roll. So with uh, the, like you were saying about the hillbilly, some of that uh, they put in a little of that. That kind of shuffle kind of feel. That's right. And a lot of that <clears throat> came from Appalachia, which, if you trace it back, the, some of the Appalachian music came from Ireland. Yes. The Celtic stuff. So that was a big influence Absolutely. as well. Ancient. So when we look at, when we look at these things, they kind of, the history repeats itself uh, yes. a lot with the fusions of different styles and different music. In fact, uh, I mentioned that musicians are on the cutting edge of society when it comes to healing us, getting to know each other. And when you were in middle school, I think it was, we had a couple of guys stay at the house. I think one was from Sweden and the other guy was from Yugoslavia. Yes. And they were with a group called um, Up, Up With People. People. Yes. That's right. I remember. And Up With People took uh, young people from uh, different countries and formed musical groups and had them tour the United States. It was amazing. I think it's a wonderful idea. If something like that started up again, only taking kids from the inner city from the rural areas and things of that nature mm -hmm. so that we could get a better understanding today through music uh, to do things. That's awesome. Uh, to, go, to go back to the early days of rock and roll when things happened uh, back then, the record companies were no better or no worse than uh, textile factories mm. or mining. Coal miners. They took the musicians and they treated them as though they were coal miners. Just exploiting and their talent. The right. And in some cases, maybe they even got them hooked on illegal substances so they could keep ranking out. Absolutely. In my day, every week there was a new top song, the top 10. The single. There were 45s. Uh, 45 was the size of the record. And you were so saying that you the remember seeing the, the 78s. Right. Uh, you, then it went to 33 and a third. That's and then it went to the 45. So a lot of people have seen the, the 45s, which is almost right. like this. And then the, 30, the 33rd is going to be a little bigger. And then the 78 right. was really thick. And you were saying even your great-grandparents, you vaguely remembered... Uh, even seeing a wax cylinder with the, with the cone right. is that so so that you know the crystal set the wax cylinder the 78s 33 and a third the 45s then you saw it go from there was it to a track is that what the jump was basically for the yes. consumer yep and now, what was your, your musicians can you uh I remember some memories of Max, and uh, I remember we had, um, you were pretty edgy with it. You, you had the Faces. Uh, you remember Rod Stewart's band, the Faces. Oh, yeah. We had that. Uh, the Doobie Brothers. Oh, yeah. Um, Chuck oh, Mangione. Feels so good, Chuck Mangione. And I can remember with the 8-tracks, so we'd be driving, it's this huge cartridge, plug that into the car stereo system 
and you're really grooving, loving what's going on, and then depending on the song, you could be at just the, the crescendo moment of a song, and then it stops, and it clicks. It does this big click, and it's changing programs, and you wait about uh, maybe five to eight seconds or something, and then it clicks again, and then you hear the rest of the song. Right. You're... <laughs> crazy. It's crazy. So, One of the things with yes. musicians is that come along in the in a the day, they do not have what people have in Sarasota. The guys had to learn their riffs and get their chops in the back rooms of clubs. And this is where they're exposed to a lot of things that maybe they shouldn't have. Here in Sarasota, we've got music the compound. That's right. Where safe environment, even in the midst of COVID. Yes. Uh, and you've got, you've got cutting edge tools, uh, things are fantastic where you can uh, uh, be educated, you can learn to collaborate with other people, uh, and you can get inspired by the, the tremendous uh, instructors that are there. I think that's fantastic. And now with the, what you're doing over the internet, and this is just the beginning, because what's coming down the road is I've talked with you about. Yes, I want you to share. Yes, let me frame that for a second. Uh, Because there's a wealth of knowledge and expertise here, not only from age, but from your observing the whole gamut of from these really early memories to now, 2020, 2021. And we've gone back to the invisible. So, you know, we... The whole thing in talking about the A tracks, we we know it went to cassettes, CDs, uh, MP3, you know, USB sticks, which are still around, but it's really all about streaming now. And what you have found in your research is this thing called Jack Trip, and then now it's morphed off into Jack Stream. And if you could share with everyone is listening, kind of what down the pike, and not everything that we've we've talked about on it, uh, but what they can hopefully expect with with some of this stuff with Jack Trip and Jack Stream that that you've learned about. One of the, one of the problems for musicians is the band can't get together because of COVID or whatever, but just the cost of going different places. When you all get in the Zoom room and try to play, the drummer and the bassist are trying to get the beat down, but there's a uh, the lag. Late, yes, so the latency. So the guitar play, he's off, everybody's off. Jack Tripp was developed by Stanford University, and it has now been brought in where, if we're in a 300-mile radius at this current time, we'll be, it'd be like we're in the same room. So what you're saying is zero latency. You're saying so it would be as if we're in the same room at the same time, as long as they're within 300 miles of each other. That's where the technology right now. Right. Imagine, if you will, if there was some uh, musician stuff in Orlando or down in Miami that uh, you from uh, Music Compound want to jam with the. Uh, Miami Sound Machine or somebody of that nature. Absolutely. If there was a way, which there is today, of getting there and all collaborating. My God, it, it, then things just even grow exponentially. Yes. So it's, it's a fantastic tool. Now, you uh, just recently, we, the Mayor's Feed the Hungry had a program called uh, Music That Moves Through 2020, which was highly successful. It raised over $25,000 for uh, helping feed hungry people. And that was thanks to a lot of local musicians in the uh, Tampa Bay area, Sarasota area. Um, and beyond. And, uh, people from Nashville and from Mexico City and from California. And a lot of that was pre-recorded. And yes. It took a lot of engineering. Whereas with Jack Tripp or Jack Server, it could all have been live and we wouldn't have to do the other things. Right. So it's, 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 everything is moving along so fast. Uh, so what they're saying 
thing is, it, what, you've been some, to some webinars on it in this kind of thing with uh, Jack's stream as well. And so what you're saying, it, what's coming down the pike is that these different musicians in different localities, uh, and eventually it could be anywhere in the globe, but, but for now we'll, we'll talk about the 300 mile radius. They're going to be jamming. So Miami, I don't know the exact distance of Miami to Sarasota. Is that within 300? Yeah. Okay, so they could jam, uh, you know, and it goes on from there. They're jamming. Then that could be shared to whatever platform. And so, uh, you know, we have no idea what the future of Facebook and all these different, but there's always going to be something, whether it's Parler, it's USA, Dot Life, it's all these different networks, whatever it is, it's this video that can be shared, but it's going to happen live and it will be in sync as it's happening. So what you're saying, totally different. We're just going to make Zoom jamming look antiquated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what the advantage is as a parent, as a parent, I know that music has many different things that it accomplishes for the student. It helps them with social skills. It helps them with a lot of different things. And Definitely. research has shown it helps them in their grades. It yes. helps them in the opportunity of getting a, um, a scholarship. It helps them in a lot of different ways. So that's great. But in the old days, you had to, if you were going to make some change, had to hook on with the record company. So yes. come to find out they're just as evil as everybody else. And today, even folks like uh, uh, your friend there, Chick Corea, okay, um, he's branching out to the Internet, where he's able to control everything as a complete business himself. So the, the thing that uh, will happen with youngsters learning music now Translating, they don't have to become an engineer. They don't have to do any of these things. They collaborate with other people, just like you did with Wheat Buckley and with uh, Mike Sales for the. Uh, I mean, it was still the event. Uh, the, the whole the collaboration. Right, the collaboration, and so. Uh, in in these times, what's interesting is so a musician. Basically, they could learn their craft a lot virtually through somewhere, music compound. We've got all types of teachers. We've got over 20 instructors that specialize in things like songwriting, vocal technique, uh, guitar, bass, drums, keyboard, ukulele, um, theater, uh, all different aspects that they can tune in. And yes, if they're here in Sarasota, go for it. Come on in. If they're not, they can learn virtually, but then taking it to the next step, being part of a production that would happen virtually as well. Uh, we also have hybrid events. So we, we do have in-person events now as well. But what you're saying as far as Jack Trip and Jack Stream, where these kind of collaborations, these early jam sessions that could happen instead of happening in an upstairs room, uh, 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 over the garage type room, instead of that happening, they're all at home and they're in sync. And this thing is going to be rebroadcast and impact people on a on a live level. That's correct. Plus, as a student, I can go back into YouTube or whatever, whatever platform it's put on and review what I did. So I can not just practice, but I can practice perfect. Now, speaking of perfect, sometimes we can go too much into perfect, and we don't get into production. Here, I'll play. I'll play. Okay, yeah, you set that up. We've got four okay. minutes. I'm going to do a, a, a quick plug. We've got four minutes, so there will be another episode where we're going to talk uh, more in depth 
on what can young musicians and older musicians do to utilize this and really get their music out. And uh, I'm a student in this too. So if this, okay, if you can tee up this video that I'm about to play a little bit. This was by um, Rosie in the original. She was like 13 years old when she cut this. And it went to number one. I want you to pay particular attention to what happens with the saxophone. <laughs> so many times we try to do things perfectly. Remember, this was number one on the charts. Number one. We'll see if it picks it up. I tried to put it through the Bluetooth. We'll, we'll see okay. how this going. Our Hurricane Tornado special. So it's about to get to the saxophone coming up. Here we go after this riff. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's sloppy. Many, it's sloppy at best. Sloppy at best. How many views on, okay. on YouTube? So let's see. On views, we got 25 million. 25 million. And the reason for that is so many musicians look for what you guys call the hook. Right. That was a hook. We didn't know what it was, but it made us come back because we wanted to listen to how bad that was. And, and that love the rest of the song. And, and that's part of the how we start talking about rock and roll. That's part of the energy of rock is that we all love to you know uh, hear the unintended notes because um, you know classical music incredible. It takes virtuoso musicians to do it, to, to play pieces that have been played thousands and thousands of times, and they'll sound the exact same depending on who's doing it and, and, and who the conductor is. But what you're saying is with rock and roll, we get that unintended, spontaneous kind of thing, and that's a great example. It, it was something that... As a musician, we'd say, okay, that's sloppy. It, the best that it was was sloppy. But yet, it was number one. And even on just this YouTube, it's 25 million views. That's just an indicator of... <laughs> it, there's many more views to other places and, and listens of that. So what you're saying is with these different Jack Trip, Jack Stream... People, musicians of all ages, they're going to have opportunities to make those kind of mistakes, and it's going to be broadcast and have fun with Don't it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just have fun. <laughs> Just have fun. The other thing with it, very quickly, is the basics. Getting the basics down is so important, and learning to improvise as well. What is what was old is new again. I encourage some folks to go listen to a group called uh, St. Paul and the Broken Bones. It's a crazy thing, uh, but they are the best in soul music, young guys, and they sound ethnic, but they're white. Aren't they from? And they're out of Alabama. Alabama. So not the Alabama Shakes, but it's St. Nope. Paul and Broken Bones. And, and so we're going to... And what they did was they recorded the Muscle Shoals. We could talk about that. The, the Muscle I, I know we could... It, it always goes back to Muscle Shoals. And it, there's a lot to share on that. And the Wrecking Crew in LA. Yes. And so, and I know Alyssa knows a lot more about that than, than I do. You and Alyssa could talk on that all day, the wrecking crew, I bet. The, okay, so Evolved, we're calling you out. Thank you for your sponsorship for this Lunch and Learn, the Keto Cup. It keeps musicians of all ages nourished 
and functioning at a high creative level all day. Thanks for tuning in, Music Compound family. Please share, and we look forward to more Lunch and Learns as all this evolves. And Dad, thank you so much for doing this, and uh, look forward to more. Awesome. As you used to say, it's been a slice. <laughs> awesome. All right. Ciao. Ciao. Okay, see ya.